Get the whole story. The fear of getting tested and found positive is holding men back when it comes to cancer screening. And on this episode, I'm gonna share, I'll be sharing with you the story of Dr. Catherine Nongesa. So for full details, stay tuned. Hi, Kathy. Hi, thanks, and so thanks for having me. Oh, really, thanks so really much appreciate. also for creating time for us. Okay. And I so much appreciate. So kindly introduce yourself, and uh, I would like you to take us through, because I understand you've lost several uh, relatives when it comes to cancer. And as well, it's there that you had to start your own cancer center. Mm -hmm. So I would, love, I would like and love that you take us through your story. Uh, what is it to, to have a cancer patient? Okay, so on my introduction, mm -hmm. I think I'm a woman who has many hats. Mm -hmm. I am a mother, mm -hmm. um, a wife, an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, I am also a, a worker, I'm employed, and I'm a doctor mm -hmm. by profession, um, specializing in matters cancer, so I am a, a clinical oncologist. Um, it is not easy having a loved one with cancer, um, as a medical student, my younger sister was diagnosed with a, a rare form of cancer called choriocarcinoma. And this is a cancer that is affecting many young girls and probably they don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a, a, a school-going uh, girl who is already having her periods and somehow she, she misses her periods for some time and she starts having signs of pregnancy, mm -hmm. it could be, um, if, if they test and they don't find a life fetus, it could be um, choriocarcinoma, and choriocarcinoma is curable, and many uh, of the girls present with excessive bleeding, and if the doctor has a high end of index of suspicion, they can confirm and treat and save that, uh, uh, that girl's uh, life. Mm -hmm. And that's what my sister went through, she had excessive bleeding, and with the time, the doctors confirmed it's cancer, choriocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. And as a ma uh, at that time, I was in school as a medical student trying to study medicine. And you know, medicine is very hard. Eh? You have to really study hard. Um, and this uh, brought like kind of a disruption in my normal schedule. So I had to like go to the village. We come from Bungoma County. Uh, get my sister because I was the only one in Nairobi and through the um, difficulties like transport using public means to get her to Kenyatta go to see the oncologist who are very few at that time mm -hmm. and get chemotherapy for her it was such a journey and based on, on that uh, with those challenges I said I should uh, maybe do oncology and once I got into oncology space I also Along the way, I've had other family members with cancer. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law all had uh, different types of cancer. One was cervical cancer, another one was prostate cancer, and the last one was a lymphoma, which is like a blood cancer. So all those have shaped me into really uh, venturing more into cancer care opening up the center to make cancer care more accessible uh, to, to, to reduce um, the challenges of some of the patients that they go through just trying, just trying to find an oncologist or find a center where they can be treated. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, Doctor, I would like to get a vivid picture. What does it take? What does it look like when, when you are being pronounced that uh, you have a, a cancer patient? Especially now being that you uh, your sister and also other relatives experience the same. What is it and how draining is it? Um, it's a sad news, mm -hmm. I can say, for most of them uh, because they lose hope. Um, they feel like it's the end of the world. It's actually a life-changing diagnosis. You know, you are used to your usual life, things are going on in this direction. Then suddenly cancer comes in between and you have to adjust yourself um, time-wise. Uh, sometimes even your job is at stake. Mm -hmm. Your family is there depending on you. If you are a child, you know, you have education also staring in your face. So it's quite a major disruption and patients go through phases of uh, accepting 
uh, initially it's denial, you say why me, then you go through accepting and going now for treatment. And the earlier you accept and get into treatment, the better and uh, the faster you get access to care and this improves your survival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I will still have to dwell on the same point because uh, being that you are a, a, a doctor and I will say probably you are also a family doctor because when it comes to cancer definitely and uh, you happen to have a patient who comes from a family definitely you are the eye. Everyone looks at you as the, you are, you'll be now the savior. How is it being that you are holding a, a family a family issue and then you end up losing it? You as a doctor, how do you feel? What is it? Take us through. Um, it's not easy um, lo losing anyone, whether it's a family member, a friend, to cancer. Because every human being, I can say it is a, they are irreplaceable in, in the families sure. or in the friends' hearts. Mm -hmm. So um, it has hit us as a family that um, we've lost, uh, like our father-in-law, we lost him to pro prostate cancer mm -hmm. stage four. How long did it take? Uh, it took like a year. Though he had gone to hospital much earlier and told to be screened, mm -hmm. but because he was too, he was busy with his own things, you know, at a certain age you have so much to do. He had things to accomplish in life. He, he opted to go accomplish his, his, his uh, mission uh, before now embarking on treatment. Uh, for my sister-in-law, it was cervical cancer, which is a preventable disease, uh, number one, through... Uh, immunizing young girls um, in the teenage up to age of 14 or uh, going for routine screening, pap smears and unfortunately her she was diagnosed with cancer stage uh, 3 3B which was also the cure rate is much lower. <coughs> if we so, talk of cancer stage 3B can you give us a picture what does it look like? So the cancer goes in stages, the stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So stage one, when it's just starting, it's a small tumor. Stage two, it has started extending to surrounding tissues. Then stage three is more extensive. Maybe even it has gone to glands, lymph nodes. And stage four, it has gone to distant or far areas far away from the primary site. Mm -hmm. So for cervical cancer, it meant that uh, my sister had the cancer that had already gone outside the, the cervix mm -hmm. to the pelvic side walls, and it had caused some kind of uh, kidney uh, problems or complications from the cervical cancer. So cancer is curable when it's picked up in very early stages, but once you have stage three and four, mm -hmm. the chances of cure are reduced but still there is hope and some of them even with say three and four can still do well so long as they go they go on to on to treatment uh, what i know is that the doctor treats and god heals so there are those who get healed despite the late stage and there are those who do not uh, make it uh, despite the treatment so the treatment is also helping in terms of quality of life improving the quality of life it reduces the pain and suffering that comes along with cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking of stage, stage three, um, can, is it notable at, uh, uh, physically? Can someone notice that uh, I could be suffering from this kind of disease? Okay. Um, cancer is the biggest mimicker. It mimics other diseases, mm -hmm. and that's why patients are coming late uh, for care point in case, let's say, cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. The symptoms include low abdominal pain, pain on having intercourse, uh, bleeding, abnormal bleeding, uh, a discharge from the private area, uh, and all these are symptoms similar to when you have an STD or you have some fibroids. Mm -hmm. Women can present with that. So it, is, it needs a high index of suspicion and medical confirmation, and that's where uh, a bit of delays occur. Patients are being treated for other ailments. We go to breast cancer, which is also common. Patients will present with a lump, they will present with pain, inflammation of the breast, nipple discharge, but this can still occur in a cancer condition of the breast, like inflammatory. So if one has such symptoms, it's good to go to a doctor 
and if you are not improving they persist for over two weeks it's good to have a, a biopsy mm -hmm. uh, for prostate in men above 40 years they'll come with the what we call lower urinary tract symptoms so at that point uh, these include uh, pain on passing urine a poor urine stream uh, blood in urine you may have difficulties in even in shedding uh, uh, voiding uh, urination you may wake up many times in the night to go and urinate these symptoms mimic uh, infections uh, they mimic what we call BPH which is not a cancer condition of the prostate so in other words cancer in in early stages you may not have symptoms but as it advances you may have symptoms but then these symptoms are not very very specific and when it's diagnosed in stage three and four most of the time the symptoms are more pronounced and you've been treated for other issues but you're not getting better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the most hard hit situation that you faced especially in your line of work um, hmm. I'll say that uh, patients uh, getting cancer care have certain obstacles that uh, they have to overcome and one of them is uh, financial they face a lot of financial barriers uh, they don't have money to pay for treatment they, they don't have money to pay even for the NHIF that can cater for their care another barrier is transport as some come from far away uh, other counties just to come to Nairobi for treatment they don't have a place to stay or if it's a relative in Nairobi you know the relative also have their own commitments and now accommodating an extra person is not easy another barrier is just access to a specialized center that treats cancer sure. maybe you have to travel from far away to come to Nairobi and through their journey of navigating to get to the cancer center they have been misdiagnosed, treated for other uh, ailments and by the time now they reach you the cancer is already in late stage. Mm -hmm. Another barrier is just lack of knowledge. Patients are not aware that uh, the symptoms they are having could be cancer uh, and we have our um, the Ministry of Health has tried to to overcome this barrier by publishing what we call the national cancer screening guidelines but people are not accessing them uh, in a timely manner just to learn about what are the common cancers how does one present uh, and another thing is that uh, not all cancers are amenable to screening only a few so it will be hard to tell that you have a cancer mm -hmm. and and that can lead to late presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, having talked of the same and also being a doctor who is in line of the same disease, that it also comes with a lot of challenges, especially psychological. Uh, how, how do you feel, especially when you get attached to a patient and then uh, besides all the struggles, you end up losing that patient? Well, it's not easy. Um, we get traumatized. You know, you remember all the things you used to share, the stories you used to share with that patient, the support they gave you, uh, the support you gave them, because in life we all depend on each other. So it is sad uh, once we lose a loved one. And it's always now those memories, and you just have to learn and accept that it has happened and in my language they always say that um njia ya kila mtu yeah so i just accept i know that one day we are all going so just pray for their soul and just move on have you ever felt attached to a patient and then all of a sudden you lose her and you feel like you are so down yes I, I really I mean so many times because I'm treating cancer patients so every day I encounter uh, like case in point we have always cancer support group members mm -hmm. and these are family of cancer survivors we've been working with them since some from 2014 and the women have battled cancer they have come out victorious and last 
last um, about a week more than a week ago we lost uh, Regina you know we felt so traumatized some of the members in Uwezo were like they, they were so down so it is not easy so I get attached to them they are like my friends uh, they are like my family and some of them you know God gives you friends and some of them you are just really so close we talk about so many things and then and they also help me in other aspects maybe a patient could be working in another industry and I need help in that industry mm -hmm. they help you so when they pass on you just feel like a piece of you has gone yeah but mm -hmm. we just pray about it and encourage the ones who are still alive that let's keep on uh, fighting this disease because cancer can come back mm -hmm, after sure. successful treatment. Yeah, sure. Mm. Uh, it's always said that uh, every successful child, there is a story behind it. And uh, I understand you have a, a, a screening center, screening testing center. Uh -huh. So I would like you to tell us the story behind it. What triggered you to start a, a Texas center? Mm. So there are many stories behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is that uh, the biggest cancer center in the world, it is in uh, the MD Anderson Cancer Center, which is in Texas. So that is one of the reasons we started Texas. Another story behind it is that uh, my last born child was born in Texas. Uh, my husband used to work in Texas. Mm -hmm. And then... I also did uh, an attachment at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas, <laughs> and I liked history. <laughs> yeah, the way things are done there. Um, and really, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what exactly do you guys do, and uh, what should people expect from you? So we do screen for most of the cancers. <laughs> uh, but we do follow the national cancer screening guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we, not all cancers are amenable to screening, but uh, there are certain common cancers that we do screen for. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, cervical cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. Um, and also we encourage uh, uh, patients to come forward for screening for colorectal, uh, the esophageal cancer, and even just children also, they need to be checked. Uh, and screened for, for cancer, uh, but d d it will depend uh, on the doctor's evaluation. So I always encourage people calling in, oh, can I come for screening? What is the cost of screening? I think first is you have to, to, be, you have to see a consultant. Once the consultant has seen you, they now advise what test or what screening do you need. Uh, most of the time, if you are healthy and you don't have any problem, you may not need any further tests apart from just the doctor evaluating you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dr. Ray, there are so many myths when it comes to cancer. And um, uh, 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 I understand there are so many uh, people who have lost their lives with following such kind of myths. Many people would like to understand uh, what is cancer? What are the causes of cancer? Um, as we speak, cancer is, is a global problem. It's not even just limited to Kenya alone. The causes are varied. Um, majority we don't know up to now. Even America, UK, Europe, they don't know. But a few have got identifiable risk factors. Um, for example, use of tobacco and alcohol. So smoking is a major risk factor. Um, obesity, being overweight. Um, infections. Uh, we've said about human papilloma virus, HPV, it, it can cause cervical cancer and other cancers. Hepatitis B, which is an infection, can cause liver cancer. Uh, we have another virus called Epstein-Barr virus. It has been associated with a lot of lymphomas in children. Um, other factors um, include uh, radiation exposure, um, even from natural radiation. Um, then uh, lack of uh, exercise uh, and many of these factors can be multifactorial that not just one factor <laughs> age is also an issue as we grow older the chance of getting cancer is more uh, and 
from our statistics, we see that the majority of the cancers, like 47,000 new cases are reported in adults, but in children it's about 3,035. Mm -hmm. uh, so age is an issue. Sex is a problem. Uh, most of the cancers in our community are reported in women, 60%, while 40% is occurring in, in men. So well, we suspect there's also a genetic uh, component mm -hmm. uh, to that, a positive family history. Mm -hmm. So at one point in time, you may have a combination of all these factors. Mm -hmm. And at one time, you may just identify one risk factor. And in others, you may never find the real cause of this cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So having in this, been in this journey for so long, uh, what is your experience? What have you learned? What have you picked? Uh, I've picked that a cancer patient is just a normal human being like you and me. And when they have cancer, cancer is a disease which needs uh, treatment. And there's always hope uh, that some, despite the despair, there's always hope at the end of the tunnel and majority have been treated and cured and also many have also tried uh, treatment and they have not made it but we always um, recommend uh, treatment with the following um, approved treatments or international guidelines what the West is doing mm -hmm. um, I think cost could be a limiting factor and just to bust the myth that cancer is not a death sentence, um, I think I've seen that. Though I've also learned that their patients, despite being diagnosed with cancer in early stages, they get misled. Mm -hmm. They are told, don't go for surgery, cancer should not be touched, it should not be operated, mm -hmm. or don't go for chemotherapy, don't go for radiotherapy. Some go for alternative treatments, and by the time they come to hospital, the things are a bit let mm -hmm. mm. uh talking of chemo uh because I, I understand th there was a time i had an interview with, uh, with dr diambo mm. and uh, later uh, following up the feedbacks i came to learn that most of the people that were typing they had this um i don't know if it is a misunderstanding or what uh, most of them they have that perception that radio uh, chemotherapy kills m faster than the, the the cancer itself what is the reality in it no, the reality is that uh, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, mm -hmm. surgery, all these are approved treatments for cancer. Research has been done on them and it has proven beyond any reasonable doubt that they can help control the cancer or even cure the disease. Unfortunately, as I said, cancer is a disease like any other disease, like malaria. So there's no doctor who can guarantee you that, yes, I'll cure malaria 100%. We know that the biggest cause of death in our community are infectious diseases. And what are infectious diseases? It's like pneumonia, okay, malaria. But these are treatable conditions, but somehow they are not in some patients the medicine don't work. So it is the same with cancer, that for strange reasons, some patients, despite the cancer care, the, the chemotherapy or radiotherapy or surgery, they still succumb to the disease, but majority get helped with treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Common effects that are related with, 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 the, with the chemo? Uh, nausea, vomiting, hair loss, lack of appetite, feeling tired, if you are in the reproductive period, mm -hmm. whether man or woman, you may go into infertility because of you, if, a, if it's a lady, you are pushed into menopause early. Our reproductive cells are very sensitive to both radiation and chemotherapy. So those are some discussions you need to have with your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing about fertility, mm -hmm. you can still have your family later if the fertility recovers mm -hmm. but you have to give yourself some time for the chemotherapy medicine to be flushed out of your system it's a matter of time like six months then if the periods come back you can um, bear children mm -hmm. um, 
and other side effects are really related to the medication. Mm -hmm. One of the most feared is hair loss but most of the time the hair can grow back after some time. Mm -hmm. mm, we've seen women with breast cancer, they lost all their hair, they wear wigs for some time and then hair comes back. Oh. So patients should not fear the side effects because the side effects are short term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's better you go through those side effects on the short term basis, but you save your life on long term. Mm -hmm. mm. So Dr. as we wrap up, uh, do you think the government has done much when it comes to cancer? And then uh, what, what is the best way of uh, preventing this kind of, uh, 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 I'll call it a, a beast of a disease? Our government has tried, um, one in training uh, doctors. We have institutions training doctors, nurses, uh, radiotherapists, medical physicists, and cancer care is multidisciplinary. So apart from those uh, um, medics in the, in the oncology field, we also need, uh, we have doctors being trained in the surgical field, in the medicine field, we also have counselors, mm -hmm. psychologists, all that coming in to play uh, a role in cancer care. Mm -hmm. And that our government has enabled those institutions to train. And if any uh, training is not available locally, we have scholarships through government for uh, doctors to train overseas. Uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure, we've had a lot of uh, development. We have three national cancer treatment centers, we have county uh, radiotherapy centers. So that is uh, a big boost into the cancer care by our government. Uh, sure. And we also do have the National Hospital Insurance Fund, or now they call it National, Hospi national Health Insurance Fund, mm -hmm. that has also helped cancer patients. It can pay for surgery in the counties, mission hospitals, in the public uh, hospitals and even pay part of the care for, for the patient in the private institutions. Mm -hmm. So we have that oncology package and many patients have been encouraged. You don't wait to be sick to enroll on that um, insurance. Ah, mm. nice. So oh, one or two patients who are suffering from cancer? I just give them encouragement. Um, follow what your doctor is saying uh, and also pray that um, you get far and energy to endure this kind of journey. It's, a, it's not an easy journey. Uh, it has a lot of obstacles, but if you are positive, you, you will overcome and yeah, get sure. uh, cured. Sure. Mm. So thanks so much, Dr. Thank you for having me. sana kwa kutenga mda. Shukran sana. Asante. Mm. Um, to my people, I believe it's said that uh, prevention is better than cure. So it's better you go earlier for screening than you wait until the late stage. Till next time, I'm your host, Jalam Sumba.